Hi, welcome to Open Studio at VCTV. Today we're going to be talking about the Rock River Artist Tour, which takes place July 19th and 20th, so it's coming right up. And I have with me today Leonard Gaguzis, Rob Cartelli, and Pete Novick. Hi. 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 Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to start off with having each one of you telling me a little bit about how you got to Vermont, how you became an artist in Vermont, or maybe you were an artist mm -hmm. before, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit about your work. But let's start with just a little bit about yourselves. Okay. My name is Leonard Arcaseos. Uh, I came here nine years ago. I've been teaching for 31 years as a college art professor of studio art. The last uh, job was in Pennsylvania. I was there 25 years. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to retire soon, and we were looking, my wife and I were looking in Vermont, and found a place in Dummerston, and we bought it, and um, I decided I really liked this place too much, and so I retired a year early. And we moved here and, and uh, settled into New Fame, actually, and loved it. Loved being here, loved the lifestyle, loved the people, et cetera, et cetera. And so after 30 years or so of, of getting other, ki other people, kids, mm -hmm. to do as mm -hmm. well as they can, push themselves, I decided it's my turn. And so, idealistically, that's, that's my life now. I'm, but I'm have tired. you always been an artist, or is this oh, something yeah. new? Well, no, my parents didn't want me to be an artist. They wanted me to be other things. So I beat my head against the wall at Bronx High School of Science for a few years, and then tried to be an engineer in college, and at City College, and, and decided they decided that was not for me. <laughs> and so I switched to art, my mother was perplexed. And uh, I didn't care. I figured it's about time. I have to do what I want to do. And so it was midway through college that I started to think of seriously. I've always been drawing since I was a child. Mm -hmm. But immigrant parents, you know, go to college, be successful, make a good living. And right. they, they couldn't see and not be an artist. That's a good, <laughs> good track. But okay. it's worked out very well. And Rob? Um, so uh, I'm a Vermont native. My, uh, my family um, uh, moved to the Vermont area, the Vermont area in the mid-70s, mm -hmm. sort of the back-to-lander type folks. Oh. Um, so uh, lucky enough to, to have been born here and, and growing up in the area. Um, and I, I got into what I do, which is pottery, um, in, in college. Actually, kind of like Leonard, halfway through college, um, I, I, discovered, I discovered ceramics in an elective class, um, and it just spoke to me, um, art in general. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. I, I did start out as an engineer, and uh, I, I survived in that for about 20 years doing power plant type stuff and you know, propulsion marine engineering. Um, then my wife said, you can either settle down now or <laughs> you'll be a bachelor. So I'd always, <laughs> I'd always been interested in, uh, in woodworking, uh, so I did a lot of things at home anyway. And over the course of the last 20 years, we had a chance to live in Japan for a long time. So I uh, worked with some local cabinet makers and uh, really got the hook of um, the things they did technique-wise and uh, a lot of handwork, a lot of very simple things, but complicated in another way. So my wife and I found a little cabin up here, geez, in the 80s. We never knew that we'd live here, but we... We were moving around so much, we, we, we bought it. It's in South Newfane. And uh, I was working as a cabinet maker in Washington, D.C. area, uh, which was a, a great place to be, but very expensive. And then we had the crash. <laughs> so um, I kind of bailed out of there since my main shop had been up here for a long time. So came up in 2011 permanently, uh, joined the Guild of Vermont Furniture Makers that year. And so it's been uh, slowly building a business. Uh, a lot of great cabinet makers in Vermont and all over New England. So it takes a while, but I've nipped into an area I think that uh, uh, works for me, and there's not a lot of other people doing the sort of the Japan influence <coughs> kind of work. So, so I'm surviving. That's great. That's <laughs> Thank well, you. One thing I think we should talk about a little bit, and maybe we'll get to that in a minute, is actually surviving as an artist in Southern Vermont and how you actually do it. But Leonard, tell us a little bit about um, what you're actually doing. Well, okay. <laughs> thank you, Lynn. Um, currently, most of my, most of my work, are, this is an example of what I'm working on right now. Um, it's a large, it's five feet by eight feet, 
it's eight feet tall. It's uh, it's in progress right now, and it's um, I use India ink on Yupo paper. Yupo is a and, and here's a, a shot of, that I took of myself mm -hmm. working mm -hmm. on the piece mm -hmm. to get a, a sense of scale, and that's largely what I what I've been doing for the last eleven years or so. This, this ink on Yupo paper, and it's a technique I, I guess I developed on my own for myself, and it it really works very well for me. So that's what I'm currently doing. Although about two years ago, uh, after 11 years of working in large scale black and white work, and often depressing and upsetting and negative, and because there was just where is the color? Then? Well, where oh yeah, okay. And then, but after a while, th that that blackness took gave up. Uh, it's it's hold, well, actually it did not give it up its hold on me. So I had to get. So lately, what I've been doing are these these small. Uh, I try to do exactly the opposite of what I've been doing, which is small, not large, um, abstract, not color. Um, so these are different themes that I that I work on um, while I'm relaxing, uh, or just at home, or in this in the studio. Uh, I these are I have yeah I I have about 200 of these. And I haven't been displaying them at all, really, locally. So this is a, a, an opportunity for me just to see how people react. And the people I have seen and like them, etc. But it's uh, it's a, it's not a change. It's a change, but it's not a uh, it's not another path. It's a parallel path. I, I find it uh, very rewarding to do realistic drawing. I mean, that's impressive to me and other people. But there's something more sacred to me about abstract art, and I tend to want to be there at the same time. So I'll take breaks and, and do this other kind of thing. So I'll be I'll be exhibiting both. My thumb is always my hands are always full of ink. And during the tour, I, I usually demonstrate the the, ink, the black ink and white, the black and white ink work. And that that's usually the the thing that people enjoy. Um, and I'll be doing that again this year. So these are uh, these are porcelain um, uh, functional potters is is my main body of work um, that I've been doing for about four or five years now. Um, they're you know I try to keep things relatively quiet um, in the pieces um, and sort of as a whole the body of work is, is more about subtlety than about shouting. Um, you know the color the, the um, much more of a monochrome uh, palette that I work with. Um, they're all wheel thrown for the most part. I have a couple pieces that are I use different techniques in, in terms of creating them, um, uh, but mostly wheel work. And these are uh, the flash microwave space. And you can use them every day. Yeah, they're really meant as everyday pieces to be used in the home, and sort of part of my um, uh, philosophy in, in keeping them relatively uh, subtle and, and quiet in terms of their um, their look is. So they'll fit into a home relatively nicely, and so that a, a meal on a plate of mine, um, you know, the food is sort of takes the center stage as opposed to the as opposed to the seat. Um, they they like them. I mean, the the people that that do key into into my my work really enjoy them. Um, uh, usually, a couple times a year, I'll do you know, wedding registries for so a large body of work just to start a couple off with. Um, in the home, and you know, I personalize the pieces to some extent for those those commissions. Um, but each piece has, um, in terms of decoration, um, I do a, a mishima or a, an inlay mm -hmm. um, design. I don't know if you can pick it up in the camera. But so under each piece, there's some little surprise. Oh. Uh, that's great. Um, this is a little tie. Yeah, it's it's kind of light, but um, and so the the decoration is, is light and subtle too, um, but it's enough to keep it a little bit more interesting. And so if some people key into, they like the work as, as it is, but some people will, will hone in on, oh, it just has, oh, it just has a little touch of Sputnik. So they're like, oh, that's like, yeah, so sometimes it's, it's, a, it's a nostalgic thing that keeps people into it, and sometimes it's, it's a larger. That's great. Yeah, I see a beautiful like that. Chair over here. Well, thank you. Thank Tell you. Us about that. Uh, well, I'll, the, the roundabout way is uh, I make a lot of case pieces, um, and 
over the last few years, especially since I've come up here, I've wanted to do more uh, chairs. The case pieces are functional. People buy them, you know, for every reason you buy case pieces to put clothes in or, you know, whatever you want to put in there. But chairs seem, seem to be more, more intimate because it's got to be something that fits the body and you want people to sort of, you want to encourage them or give them something that's got a unique design, but it, it, the chair needs to ask you to sit down in it and be comfortable. Plus, it's a lot more challenging because uh, a lot of people can like a cabinet, but unless the chair is comfortable, uh, and it's not going to be comfortable for everybody, so it's quite a, quite a challenge. Um, I, uh, I brought this one. Um, it's, it's a cantilevered chair. Instead of having four legs, um, it's got just two main legs that come down to a, a runner. The nice part about the chair is that uh, the, the runners slide on carpet um, back and forth, so you don't have to pick your chair up as you move back and forth. There is an American cabinet maker named George Nakashima from the late 1940s, 1950s. He had a big studio in New Hope. Pennsylvania. His daughter, Maya, uh, still runs the, uh, the studio there. And they still make a line of these that are a little different than mine. Um, but the design, I think, comes from Bauhaus, mm -hmm. the cantilevered mm -hmm. chairs in the mm -hmm. 20s. You can see some representations of those online and whatnot. So I've tried to simplify it. And I've also tried to make it more of a Vermont thing even though the best cherry in the world still comes from Pennsylvania, so you can't get around that. But I use a, a local wood to contrast for the spindles. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, as, as far as the joinery goes, it sort of follows some of that Japan tradition. This joint down here is very complicated. So I brought, a, I brought the template that just shows um, how the joint works. The whole, the whole chair, all the stress, is in that joint, and so it has to be kind of perfect. There are nine pairs of mating surfaces in three planes. So the cheek of this bridle joint on the leg has to mate with this surface on the foot. Two, four, six. And then on the edges, there's a wood-to-wood -wood joint here, eight, 12, 14, 16, 18. So 18 mating surfaces in three planes, and they all have to work, or, you, or you've got some expensive <laughs> firewood. The first one I made uh, took all day, and it, it became expensive firewood. But I'm, I've, I've built many of these now, and so I'm, I'm down to maybe two hours, <laughs> two hours of, of hard work to do each, each joint. Uh, so. Anyway, uh, they're fun to make. They take about um, total from taking the wood out of the wood pile to the finished chair. That's probably close to 12 hours of work if you're just making one chair. Right. Um, and so. if you're making six, then there's a little uh, multiplier in there since you're setting things up and getting them and down. And you're using all local wood? Well, unfortunately, um, we're too far north to get great cherry up here. The trees just don't grow that large, and nothing competes with Pennsylvania cherry. It's just the most beautiful wood. Uh -huh. um, the American cabinet makers in Philadelphia back in the 1780s and beyond, they just went out in the backyard, so to speak, and took down these beautiful big trees. Um, a lot of that furniture is in the museum in Philadelphia. But you can't beat that. But for the local flavor, uh, I use spindles. These are uh, a, a local wood. Uh, and I get it here right in Vermont from a local guy who harvests it up in Chester. And he air dries everything. So I drive up there a couple times a year and buy a bunch of stuff from him. And then I cut, the, cut all these by hand and then hammer them in. There's no glue here. Just hammer them in. And it's a compression fit. Um, so you wouldn't have time to glue all these in and still get land this top. So mm -hmm. I can tap them all in. And then finally, the only thing you have to glue is the pins up in the top. So um, it's a nice design. Um, and it is a little different than what you see normally. Yeah, so I try, to, I try to 
keep up with that. And the Rock River artists, I had two of them in the uh, artists in our display last year, and they were, I think they were well received. It was a fun, fun thing to participate in, in that. So let's talk a little bit about the tour and what's going to happen. How do you guys prepare? Oh, we have meetings. <laughs> oh. And then we have <laughs> no, we, we plan for our events and we assign tasks to because we all just volunteer our time to each other and, mm -hmm. and we take over the the schoolhouse in well, South Bay, not William Hill. I was okay. mixed up there, but uh, we put on this exhibit. So a few of us volunteer to do clean up the, the building. A few of us volunteer to hang the show. Everybody brings their work in at a certain time. We spend a couple of days hanging the show, and then people come in and they can tweak a little bit. Um, but it, it just takes a lot of, of group energy. And as you can see, some of us, I mean, my whole attitude towards making art is that you put some ink on, you take some ink off, and when you're done, you're done. I'm not the engineer. <laughs> I, part of the beauty, of, the nice things about the tour, I think, is that you meet all kinds of personalities. Um, yes. And, and all kinds of approaches to, the, to our work. We should and say there are 17 artists there are seven involved right. in, oh, this, a small in sample. this tour. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And there, yeah. Some are not showing this year. Um, but we alternate. Um, that's and actually, we, behind us, if people have been watching, they can see examples of some yeah. of the other work. So we just divide up the labor, I think. That's, that's my answer mm -hmm. to that question. Mm -hmm. anyway. And in terms of your own studios or your own space? Well, thank God for the studio. I mean, for the, for the studio tour, I never clean the place up. <laughs> so one of the reasons I'm in the group is that once a year I clean up the studio. And, I, and it, it forces me to do new work because people do come back year after year. Right. And they don't want to see you displaying and doing the same thing all the time. Right. So we try to keep it interesting uh, to those who come. Yeah. Um, so um, I use um, a little breezeway in my house um, mm -hmm. as, a, as a gallery space. So that gets, we move everything out. It's sort of a, a place to keep firewood in the wintertime. So if that gets moved out, um, sometimes new paint goes up, um, shelving, pots come in. It, it, it makes a big transformation before the public before the public arrives. Now, do you all have gardens? I know some of the some of the artists have beautiful gardens. Yeah, well, I think you. Have I, some I let gardens. people walk around the house, and it's quite pretty. So yeah. I don't brag about the garden yeah. because my wife does most of that. Okay, because I know sometimes it's so it's really fun to come in and see the studio and see where the work is made, and in some cases get a demonstration of how you actually do it. Will you be doing any demos at all? I often dec uh, do demonstrations on the decoration. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my actual studio is still in, in Brattleboro. We, we, we moved into our house about three years ago. Okay. Um, so the studio hasn't totally arrived into the home yet. Huh. Um, so I bring pieces that are in process and mm -hmm. kind of show, That's good. show that off. That's good. I do combat gardening. So I, I've cleared <laughs> <my> house. <laughs> I cleared another couple of acres over the last two years in the, the no cash type of way. So the logger got the logs and mm -hmm. uh, neighbor helped me stump it. Um, and I'm up at 1,500 feet, which is a different climate up there. Mm -hmm. So uh, the blueberries were just blooming last week. Uh, oh yeah, and I would I put things in and see if they survive for the winter. Uh, so I'm not really a gardener. I just whatever is growing, I buy more of currants. It turns out. Love it. <laughs> Who would know? So, yeah. uh, so when people come to your studio, well, what I do is, do do? yeah, I, I have a, a couple of older tansu Japanese cabinets. Called, you know, that was their word for mm -hmm. typical storage cabinet. Uh, one dates. It's it's not a very good one, but it but it's an older one from about the 1860s or 1870s, and I bring it down from the storage upstairs into the shop, and uh, I lay out some work to do that replicates what was being done um, from the 1850s in terms of joinery techniques and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And then I show them how I either use that technique or adapt it to something that's modern. And then we go from the one set of dimensions, you know, probably in the middle of last century, Japanese were, the men were five feet four and the women were four foot nine, you know, because they didn't drink milk and they didn't have vitamins. So. <laughs> Well, things have changed, and so the furniture has to get bigger, but you also want to keep that proportion and alignment. So break out the calculator, and that, that's pretty easy to do. Um, one of the techniques I like to show is the use of bamboo nails, which is how drawers were put together. Number one, it was very fast, and it's incredibly strong, particularly after you, in the modern way, add glue. So the aliphatic resins, what we call yellow glue, uh, is 
extraordinarily strong. Wood will break somewhere else before the glue mm. joint will break. So I, I get people around the bench and we, we, tap, uh, we tap them home or I give people an opportunity to try that so they can maybe wear the little Japanese hachimangu <laughs> and <laughs> feel like a <laughs> That's regular. Now, a little bit more about the tour. Uh, again, it's July 19th and 20th, mm -hmm. and actually, there's other things to do in South Newfane. Um, I think there's going to be a special lunch. Yes. I think the cafe is going to be open specially. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, the what used to be a, a, the Williamsville store, Williamsville store the cafe will be open was, was opening. And I think that people, when they go over to um, O'Lally Daylily Farms, they'll be, see, be able to see all the farms and Ellen Darrow and her work. Yeah. Um, what else is going on. Well, there's the, the lunch at, at the Williamsville Hall. Oh, the Williamsville Hall. And there's yep. a barbecue. The big barbecue Saturday, lunch. Saturday yep. night, which is also a fundraiser yep. for the Williamsville Hall. So, it, you know, it could be a wonderful weekend for people. Oh, it's a beautiful area. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's a beautiful Jarrow. area. Yeah. Um, what else can you say? Well, people mostly usually start by going to the, the schoolhouse in South Newfane. Um, it's from 10 to 6. Ten to six. Ten to six, six every day. Six, yep, both days. Saturday and Sunday. Yep. Rain or shine. Rain or shine. And it's <laughs> yeah, free. We'll be there. That's yeah, free. Oh, yes. it's free. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely free. Yeah, but you should stop. People should stop at the at the school. The house schoolhouse. Schoolhouse. You can pick they get a map. Maps. They get they get to see everybody's address, phone number, and and they know what the work looks like before they go. Yeah, and somewhere. I've I've been to that exhibit. It's absolutely spectacular. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really it's a wonderful space. Very special. My introduction to the group was through the tour when we first moved here. Before we moved here, it was one of the reasons we liked the area so much. Uh -huh. that oh. we, we just saw that there were so many artists in this area. Yeah. And the Williams Old store was uh, was nice too, but then that disappeared. But yeah. now that'll be back. But now it's coming back. Be very yeah. nice yeah. back. No, there's more to do. It's a very yeah. nice area. Yeah. It's gorgeous. I had no idea. Sorry. No, it's just I, a I didn't know area. about the what the Rock River artists were when I moved here and um, then once I got up here permanently about in the springtime of two thousand eleven. I saw the little flyers, and uh, so that, it was the Saturday, and I got on my bike and just drove around, and it was, what a day! You get to drive around on your bike and look at all these great tours, and that's when I met Chris uh, Trebert the first time, and then about a few months later, she invited me to join, and I said, well, Chris, I'm not really an artist, I just make furniture. She said, oh, no, come on. So uh, I joined, and I, it's been great. It's been super. Yeah, here's a little picture of, um most of the artists, and I don't know if you can get a close-up on this, but <laughs> there, we there we go. There we are. Yeah, and the this, is, this is right at the old schoolhouse, school where you can actually get maps, and you can ask yeah. questions. And, and there's a know, raffle. You, you and can there's win a, raffle. a piece of our work That's right. for That's a couple right. of bucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not literally, a couple of bucks. <laughs> <laughs> literally. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good event. Oh, it's great. Yeah. It's a great event. Um, so. I think we're going to wrap up. The website, if they want to check out, and is Rock River right. Artist. So it's July. It's Rock River Artist Tour, July 19th and 20th. It's 10 to 6. And for more information, you you can go to rockriverartist.com. Uh, and there's links always, to each of us at that site. That's right. There's links. There's uh, photos. There's background information. There's actually a video that was done uh, a couple years ago. Um, so feel free to take a look at the website, and if anybody has any additional questions, they're welcome to call me or call any of the artists here. Uh, Come out and enjoy it. Yeah, love to see you out there. Thank yeah, you. Okay. Thank you very much. So thank you all, and we'll see you next time.